Aviation would not be where it is today without the contributions made by African American aviators. In honor of Black History Month, we are taking a look at some of the icons of the past and how they paved the way for the current generation. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop has the story. It is impossible to put black history into just one month. Imagine trying to put it into 140 characters. How would you tell the story of Emery Malik in a tweet? He's the first black man to have a pilot's license, earning his FAI ticket in 1912. He went on to design and build a glider. He would fly to work across the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. It would take volumes to tell his tale, but one woman hopes to fill your social feed one story at a time. Benet J. Wilson is the aviation queen. She's a respected aviation journalist and blogger, and her Twitter feed is populated this month with black aviation history. So I tweet under Av Queen Benet, and for the past four years for Black History Month, every day I do a tweet about a black who has made a contribution in aviation. There are so many important people who have contributed to the art and science of flight, but you don't have to work hard to find out Benet's favorite. Bessie Coleman in the 1920s decided that she wanted to learn how to fly, but no one in the United States would train her. And her quote was, I refuse to take no for an answer. So Bessie learned French and went to France and studied under World War I pilots. She became the first African-American woman to earn her pilot's license. And what people don't know about Bessie Coleman is she also studied aircraft engineering with Anthony Fokker. I think that's a name that um, a lot of aviation people recognize. And there are many others. Alfred Chief Anderson. Um, Chief Anderson is known as the father of black aviation. Chief Anderson founded the Tuskegee Airmen. Captain David Harris. He became the first African-American pilot hired by a major airline. He was hired by American Airlines in 1964. But the way for that was paved by um, Captain Marlon Green, who sued Continental and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled in his favor. Saiza Mizamela is making recent waves. She was the CEO of South African Airways, and she, a few years ago she started her own hair airline called Fly Blue Crane, making her the first black woman to start an airline. All of these historic figures paved the way for the next generation of pilots of color. Anthony Oshinuga is an air show and air race pilot. He's a first generation African American. His parents immigrated from Nigeria, and he grew up poor. A lot of the things that I've gotten um, to, the, to date was just me busting my butt, just you know, in the trenches, just sweating tears, getting, getting these accolades or these accomplishments done. He says the financial barrier to entry was the toughest thing to overcome and that lack of means may be a big factor in keeping young black people away from aviation. He works to show kids from impoverished areas that with hard work, they too can fly. Because when I go talk to these kids, you know, I'll come down the runway, I'm going down 180 miles per hour, land, jump out of, out of the cockpit with the microphone and start talking to kids. And the kids are like, whoa, I can't do that. I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Don't say you cannot do that. You can do this. You just need right mentorship. You just need the right people around you, the right support system to get to get through, to break through that the situation that you're in right now. It's paying forward the inspiration that he draws from pilots like the Tuskegee Airmen and Bessie Coleman. It tells you that through all the adversity that was going on back then, she did it. She did it. There's no reason why we can't do it right now. Paul Harrop, AOPA Live.